This is Mr. Anger. One more lesson from the biology, page 1107. This one is going to come from page 17 of the reading pack, and uh, page L in uh, the activity pack. This is explaining the difference between the sex chromosomes, whether the offspring is going to be male or female, whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. There's a chromosome along one of the chromosomes in the, of the 46 chromosomes, the 23 pairs, is an X chromosome. If both chromosomes are X chromosomes, then the offspring is going to be a girl. If one of those chromosomes, one of those alleles, remember that from the previous lesson, is a Y and the other one an X, then the offspring is a boy. So it has to be homozygous for the X trait for it to be a girl, heterozygous, an X and a Y, for the offspring to be a boy. So we say that in every single cell of a boy's body, every single cell, whether it's the skin or the face or the muscles or the bones, the feet, anywhere, every cell has one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So XY would be the body cells. But then the PACE distinguishes between body cells and the sex chromosome. So the sex chromosome for the female is just X, and the one that distinguishes the male is the Y. So you've got to figure out a way to keep those separate in your mind, okay? Think of, because students get these wrong on the self-test and PACE test all the time. So keep track that this is the actual sex chromosomes, and then the combination is what is called the body cells, the XX or the XY. Now let's talk about an illustration using the Punnett square. Let's cross the mom's gametes, which would be the ovum, with the dad's gametes, which would be the sperm. So watch what happens. Mom can only have XX cells, so when her body produces ovum, every single ovum will have exactly the same thing, Xs. The dad's sperm, however, is split. Half of the sperm will produce X chromosomes and half will produce Y chromosomes. So let's see what happens now when we put an X sperm with an X ovum. We get XX. Here's another one, XX. But if a Y sperm fertilizes with an X ovum, we have a boy. So this is why, if you notice here, the, the, the chance of, of either one happening is 50-50. Two out of the four options produced are female, the girls, and these last two choices would be the boys. Now you and I both know of examples of families that ended up with maybe out of 12 children, 11 of them being girls or started off with one girl after another girl after another girl after another girl and they finally had a boy. Or, uh, or maybe vice versa, lots of boys. and no, It doesn't guarantee that you're going to have a 50-50 ratio, but the chances are more likely, and it's um, about 50-50. There's no other chance. There's no other possibilities. It's imp absolutely impossible to have a YY chromosome, all right? And so just having the one Y chromosome in the pair determines that it is male. And again, the homozygous XX determines that the offspring is female. Now, one last thing about this, and your pace will talk more at length about this, but there are certain uh, diseases, genetic problems, that are only carried on the Y chromosome. They're called sex-linked genetics. Things like colorblindness, for instance, only travel on the Y chromosome. So only boys can be um, colorblind. Girls don't have that weak gene, uh, gene that can possibly come through. They'll always have a dominant gene that will overpower that. But uh, boys can, can have um, that weaker gene, that recessive gene, and, and have that come through. So your pace explains a little bit more in detail about some other sex-linked genetic diseases. And uh, you might read about others um, on the internet or might know of examples in your family, some things like that. 
So again, just to wrap it up, distinguish in your mind the difference between the sex chromosomes, which is X for female, Y for male, and then the body cells, which is the homozygous XX, determines that it's a girl, heterozygous X and Y together, determines that the offspring will be a boy. I hope that clears it up for you a little bit.